Welcome, and in this, the second and last video on this topic, we are once again looking at the founder members of the RFU, who no longer exist. Founded in 1867 as an old boys side for ex Marlborough College students who found themselves in London and were looking to continue playing football, nomads lived up to their name, as they initially did not have a home to call their own. They would borrow grounds from other leading clubs. However, they would eventually settle down, and between 1868 and 1888, they played at Blackheath, using a field on the opposite side of the road to the Princess of Wales pub, except when Blackheath were playing away, then they would use that club's pitch at Richardson's Field on Old Dover Road. This field no longer exists, having been built over many years ago, as well as part of the A2 going across it. Nomads also played at the Richmond Athletic Ground between 1888 and 90, then at the Queen's Club for a year in 1890. Between 1890 and 91, they played on a private field in Surbiton, but where this was, I have not been able to discover. Looking at a map from near the time the Nomads played in Surbiton, there are a number of fields near to the station which the club could have used, but which one it is has been lost to history. In 1907, the club would next find a home just up the road from Surbiton in Thames Ditton. Like the ground in Surbiton, I have not been able to find out where this ground was. Unlike Surbiton, we can make a fairly good guess at where this ground could have been. As has been noted before, when clubs did not own their own pitch, they would pick a ground near to a station and a local pub as a changing room. Just up the road from Thames Ditton Station is the George and Dragon pub, and looking at this map from around that time, there is a large open area behind it. Could the ground have been here? The pub is still here, but the ground behind it has long since been built on. There is also the possibility that the club used the ground of Thames Ditton Cricket Club. It looks as though the Cricket Club have been playing on Giggs Hill Green since their foundation in 1833, and therefore the Nomads could have played here outside of the cricket season. 1911, members of the Marlborough Nomads were invited to join Roslyn Park, but under the condition that the Nomad Club disbanded. Roslyn Park is now the first port of call for students who have left Marlborough College and wish to continue playing rugby. A number of players achieved international honours whilst playing for the Nomads. These were Frederick Curry, one cap, 1872, Francis Fox, two caps, 1890, Harold Freeman, three caps, 1872-74, Alfred Harmersley, four caps, 1871-74, Fred Mills, two caps, 1872-73, William Milton, two caps, 1874-75, Sidney Morse, three caps, 1873-75, to and as you may remember from part one, the first of these three caps was one when he was playing for the Law FC. William Mortimer, one cap, 1899, W.M. Tatham, seven caps, 1882-84, to the first of his caps was awarded to him when he was playing for Oxford University, and Harry Vassell, five caps, 1881-82. to Like Tatham, Vassell's caps were awarded to him whilst he was still playing at Oxford University. Two additional players received international caps, even though neither was for England. Gerald Kirk won cap 1908. He was part of the 1908 Anglo-Welsh tour to Australia and New Zealand. Even though he was capped on this tour, he did not receive a call-up to play international rugby for England. Lastly, there was H.M. Hamilton, two caps 1874 to 1875. Born in Australia, Hamilton was invited to play for England and Scotland in 1874, but elected to play for the latter. Out of all of these lost founder members of the RFU, Nomads have by far the most number of international capped players. Founded in 1869, the club started off playing on fields that are now covered by Bretton Road in Lower Edmonton. The horse and groom could have provided space for the players to get changed. Unfortunately, the club closed in 2003 to be replaced by flats. They then moved in 1873 to Coleraine Park, Tottenham, five minutes walk from Bruce Grove Station. At this location, they changed at the Red Lion pub. Unfortunately, this no longer exists, but at least the building still remains. Coleraine Park does exist, but not in the form it did when Mohicans played here. The area that was once behind the Red Lion pub was Coleraine Park, but that was built on many years ago. However, the area still goes by the Coleraine Park name. No players from Mohicans achieved an international cap whilst the club was in existence. Queen's House was founded in 1867 and was named after Queen's House in Greenwich, which is now part of the National Maritime Museum. 
even though he took its name from Queen's House, the club played its matches on the west side of Blackheath Common, 10 minutes walk from Lewisham Station, then known as Lewisham Junction, and used the Duke's Head on Dartmouth Row as their headquarters. Whereabouts on Dartmouth Row the pub was has been lost to history as it seems to have closed down before the end of the 19th century. The club disbanded in 1884 after a number of its key players either retired or emigrated. Instead of looking at a slow decline, the club decided to disband at the height of its powers. Three players achieved international caps whilst playing for Queen's House. These were Sidney Ellis, one cap, 1880, Tom Fry, three caps, 1880-81, and W. Hewitt, four caps, 1881-82. Arguably, though, the club's most famous player did not gain an international cap. He was George Rowland Hill. It was Hill who gave Queen's House their name, having been born there, but he is more famous for being Honorary Secretary of the RFU for 23 years. He was also the RFU's 18th President, and was the first man to be knighted for his services to rugby. The Rowland Hill Gates were erected at Twickenham Stadium in his memory, and still stand to this day, even though they are too small for a modern coach to drive through, hence why teams have to walk from the gates to the changing rooms in full view of the crowd. Founded in 1865, it was also known as the Old Rugbyans Club, due to the number of players that had come from rugby school. Unlike the Marlborough Nobads, though, this club was not set up as a home for ex-pupils of rugby school. It just so happened, a lot of them decided to play there. It would also be known on occasions as Ravens, which was confusing as there was another club playing at the same time with the same name. Ravens Court Park played at Bedford Park, with the nearest stations being Turnham Green and Shaftesbury Road, now known as Ravens Court Park. Stamford Brook Station would have been the nearest, but it had not been built at the time. Bedford Park was then filled, but today it is a suburban development. However, they may also have played in Ravens Court Park itself, which is not too far from where they got changed, as because the club's changing facilities were at the Queen of England pub, now called the Duchess, in Goldhawk Road, and this was also the club's headquarters. Harlequins also changed at this pub at that time, and it is therefore possible that they shared the same ground. The club disbanded in 1882, but five players earned international caps before this happened. They were Alfred Davenport, one cap, 1871, John Dugdale, one cap, 1871, Francis Isherwood, one cap, 1872, William Moberly, one cap, 1872, Ernest Still, one cap, 1873. West Kent was founded in 1867, and they played their matches on Chislehurst Common. Like a number of other founder clubs, they played both association and rugby codes. The club used the Imperial Arms in Chislehurst as its headquarters. Where they actually played though on the common is a bit unclear, but just up the road is the home of Chislehurst and West Kent Cricket Ground. A number of rugby and cricket clubs shared grounds at this time, so this could be the ground, as the common itself is still relatively wild and untended. By 1874, they were only playing rugby but the club went back to playing association football and stopped playing rugby completely by 1886. Three players won international honours whilst playing for West Kent. They were Joseph Green, 1 cap 1871, Arthur Goulomard, 2 caps 1871-72, and Charles Sherrod, 2 caps 1871-72. The first of his caps had been won when he was playing for Blackheath. Arthur Gulliman also played for the famous Wanderers Association Football Club as well as rugby for Richmond. He was the first of only two men to have held all five of the most important posts at the RFU. He was President, Secretary, Junior Vice President, Treasurer and Senior Vice President. At last, but by no means least, we come to Wimbledon Hornets. Now this entry is open to debate, but I will explain that momentarily. The earliest game played by the club was on the 28th of October 1865, when the Bell's Life Sporting Paper described a match between Wimbledon and Richmond. The club went by a couple of names, including Breakbury's Wimbledon, Breakbury was the name of the captain at the time, and Wimbledon Wanderers before settling on Wimbledon Hornets. Wimbledon were one of the powerhouse clubs of their time, playing a number of games against many of the names who would go on to found the RFU. The club would play their matches on Wimbledon Common, but once again we don't know the exact location. However, we do know that the players would change at the Rosen Crown pub, which still exists to this day. 
The captain of the Wimbledon club in 1871, when the RFU was founded, was L.J. Mayton, who was nominated to be on the first executive committee. He was also responsible for drafting the game's code of laws. This was because he was not able to play at that time, having broken his leg. Mayton would later become president of the RFU in 1874. Now, there is a Wimbledon club that still exists to this day, but is it the same club as the one that founded the RFU? The current club would say yes. But like Belsize Park before them, there is a period of time where the club did not exist. The official history of Wimbledon on their website states that the club went into a period of suspended animation between World War I and reforming in 1927. Can you really claim to be the same club when you take that much of a break? For me, no. So that is why they have included on this list. Two players won international honours as Wimbledon players. They are H.J. Graham, four caps, 1875-76, to and his brother, J.D.G. Graham, who won one cap in 1875. And so, there ends my look at the 13 clubs that founded the RFU and no longer exist.